Good morning and welcome this Mothering Sunday to the service of joint worship for the linked charges of Irvine Relief Bourtry Hill Parish Church and Irvine Muir Parish Church. We welcome you to our service and if you're visiting us for the first time and would like to be kept posted on future services, then please give us a contact on the follow link on Facebook or drop us an email. We look forward to worship this morning. If you know of anyone who would wish to be participating in our worship but doesn't have an internet link, then for the week after broadcast of this service, there is a telephone line shown on a slide later in this morning's presentation, which they can access for the cost of a local call. So now let us move to our first item of worship. Now let us pray our opening prayer of dedication this morning. Let us pray. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and life-giving Spirit, we rejoice that you have made yourself known as one of creative love and tender compassion. And we thank you that we often see you most clearly in the face of a mother. We praise you that what most people value and hold dear is set in the images of parenthood which they carry in their hearts, of which our mothers played so vital a part. We're grateful for all the parents who share in the life of our churches, the young ones and the old, those still with us and those departed. May the blessings they gave us be rich and overflowing, and may time give us greater and greater appreciation of the special love and care from our mothers. Lord, we know that for some of us, their experiences and images of parents have been short of this, have been tarnished by absence or abuse. Help us all to remember that not all mothers, not all parents, have been able to rise to the many challenges which parenting can bring. May we find healing and even forgiveness for all the ways in which some parents may fall short of fulfilling the love they gave us at birth. We thank you that the family life of our churches gives us great blessings, that here we are gifted with the chance to celebrate births, marriages and parenting, and the glorious unfolding of human potential. We thank you that today, Mothering Sunday, 
is a day for such celebration. Help us to make the most of it. Help us to use it for thanksgiving, for renewal and for rededication. May it be so for Jesus' sake, who taught us when to pray, to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hello girls and boys. Today is Mother's Day. I'm sure you know that. And I'm sure you've done something lovely for your mum today, haven't you? Yes, I thought you had. But did you know that there's lots of different kinds of mums? There's your mum, but there's stepmums, there's foster mums. And see when you grow up, you'll probably get a mum-in-law. Now, do you remember wee baby Thomas that was born just before Christmas? Well, he's doing very well and we're going to look at a picture of him after this story. And his mum, Jennifer, is just taking care of him so well at the moment. He's getting bathed and fed and very soon she's going to teach him how to walk and talk. That'll be lovely, won't it? And hopefully we'll all be back in church and we can watch him growing up and it'll be great. She's going to carry on though because there's lots of things she's got to teach him. She's going to teach him how to be a lovely wee boy and she's going to teach him how to be a good man as well. Now, I don't know if you know about this next thing, but did you know that you can be born again when you're an older person? Mm -hmm, you can. You can be born again as a child of God. And that's when you become a Christian and you start off in the Christian faith. And it will all be very new to you. So wouldn't it be great if there was someone who could help you when you were growing up that way? Well, why not have a church mum? And in inequality, we'll have to say, and a church dad as well. But as it's Mother's Day, we'll talk about church mums, shall we? Yes. And the same way that Jennifer is teaching Thomas how to come bigger boy, how to do things, he'll be feeding himself soon. A church mum helps you to take your baby steps in following Jesus. And a church mum will help you up if you stumble and fall and get it a wee bit wrong. And she'll cheer you on when you're getting it right. And she'll be so happy, so happy to see you understanding about God and following after him. And like all good mothers, church mum is like your mum. And she's trying to get you to be independent. But you'll always have roots to support you. But you'll have wings too to fly away and see what God has for your life. But there's really exciting news now. We've got church mum. We've definitely got church dad. But there's something else. Could you be a church brother? Could you be a church sister? And all the children that are going to come in who don't know about Jesus at all, and they don't know about Sunday school, and they don't know about the good fun that you have, you could tell them, couldn't you? You could help them. Once they come in, they maybe think, oh dear, I wonder what to do. You could say, come with me, come with me, and I'll show you all the great fun things that we're doing here. And that'll make them feel welcome. That'll make them feel very welcome and very comfortable. And they'll keep coming back because of you. Now, I think you could do that because I know that you're a very friendly lot. So what have we got? 
Well, we've got a church mum. We've got a church dad. We've got church brothers and sisters. So all together, that makes a church family. And like all good families, a church family is a wonderful thing. It's the best place for anyone to grow and grow those wings in. So I know you did something lovely for your mum this morning. But never forget, you've got your other family in the church. And I hope that you're going to be looking forward now to being a church brother, a church sister. Maybe some of the older people will be looking forward to being a church mum a church dad, because everybody, it doesn't matter who they are, needs as much love and warmth as they can get. So, here's our church family. What we say now is, we're ready. We're ready for all the new people to come and join us. And we're going to have fun together. And together, we're going to be stronger. So I told you earlier on, we're going to see that a lovely picture of Jennifer and Thomas. It's going to come now, and after that, Jennifer is going to read us a poem. So it's bye-bye from me, and it's bye-bye from the church family. Bye-bye, they say. See you soon. See you soon. Bye-bye. Good morning. Thank you to Lynn for her lovely story and for the wee mention of Thomas and I on my first Mother's Day. It was really kind. Thank you. I will now fo follow with a poem and a prayer which seem appropriate for Mothering Sunday and in this week of International Women's Day. The poem I'm going to read is called A Mother's Love and it's by Helen Steiner Rice. A mother's love is something that no one can explain. It is made of deep devotion and of sacrifice and pain. It is endless and unselfish and enduring come what may, for nothing can destroy it or take that love away. It is patient and forgiving when all others are forsaken and it never fails or falters even though the heart is breaking. It believes beyond believing when the world around condemns and it glows with all the beauty of the rarest, brightest gems. It is far beyond defining. It defies all explanation and it still remains a secret like the mysteries of creation. A many splendoured miracle man cannot understand and another wondrous evidence of God's tender guiding hand. Let us pray. Dear Lord, on this Mothering Sunday, this prayer comes with love, thanks and celebration for all the wonderfully strong, caring, loving and inspirational women in our lives. Thank you for the mothers who make a house a home, whose love knows no bounds and for everything they do for their families and children. Thank you for the joy children bring and the feeling of love like no other in their smiles. As we also celebrated International Women's Day this week, may we remember and be thankful for not only all the wonderful mothers, but all the strong, inspirational women for many reasons. We give thanks for all the grandmothers, stepmothers, sisters, daughters, aunties, mothers-in-law, adoptive mothers in our lives. We remember in our prayer our loved ones who are no longer with us but leave lasting loving memories and pray for women who may quietly long to become a mother but it has not yet been your will. All of these women in their own way and for all they do are strong and loved and mean the world to those around them. We give thanks and pray for them. We reflect on the words of a well-known motivational woman and worldly mother, Mother Teresa, 
when she spoke the words, do not think that love, in order to be genuine, has to be extraordinary. What we need is to love without getting tired. Be faithful in small things, because it is in them that your strength lies. Lord, this past year has taught us to be grateful for the small things in family life. Let us always be grateful for these and find strength in precious moments and may we always cherish the fond memories with those we love. In your name we pray. Amen. Today's reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, 
but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonour others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection, as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope and love. But the greatest of these is love. And may God bless the hearing and receiving of his word. I want to say three things about mums today and while they're not taken directly from that amazing chapter about love, 1 Corinthians 13, 
I think they can be inferred from it. First is this. Mothers have the ability to pass on a deep wisdom that is learned over the years. I'm sure that's partly what Paul does in this chapter. Of course, he received a huge amount of it from the spirit of Jesus Christ. But it's a wisdom that is usually inherited, maybe even in the genes of a mother. Often she doesn't even realize that she's passing it on. Most of us will have been blessed with a mother who had a pithy wisdom. She may in turn have got it from her mother or grandmother. It was stuff that was learned generations ago and has become part of her being. My mum had loads of sayings. One I loved was said when she suspected I hadn't really had a good wash. She said, it was more like a lick and a promise. When somebody was ranting and raving, maybe even me, she would say at the end of it, well, that's his gas and a peep. These sayings have got into my being and have become part of me. And I'm sure that's true for most of you. Sometimes you even hear your mother's voice inside of you. And sometimes you actually say what she said. This was most likely true of the Apostle Paul. He was just a person like you and me, just flesh and blood with a mum. In this connection, I think it's very interesting that we read in Corinthians that Paul wanted to send to the church there his assistant Timothy. And to Timothy, he once wrote, I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am now persuaded lives in you. Now, faith isn't a hand-me-down. It's a personal relationship we must all have with Jesus Christ. But it is so often in... I want to say three things about mums. I want to say three things about mums today. And while they're not taken directly from that amazing chapter about love, 1 Corinthians 13, I think they can be inferred from it. First is this. Mothers have the ability to pass on a deep wisdom that is learned over the years. I'm sure that's partly what Paul does in this chapter. Of course, he received a huge amount of it from the spirit of Jesus Christ. But it's a wisdom that is usually inherited, maybe even in the genes of a mother. Often she doesn't even realize that she's passing it on. Most of us will have been blessed with a mother who had a pithy wisdom. She may in turn have got it from her mother or grandmother. It was stuff that was learned generations ago and has become part of her being. My mum had loads of sayings. One I loved was said when she suspected I hadn't really had a good wash. She said, it was more like a lick and a promise. When somebody was ranting and raving, maybe even me, she would say at the end of it, well, that's his gas and a peep. These sayings have got into my being and have become part of me. And I'm sure that's true for most of you. Sometimes you even hear your mother's voice inside of you, and sometimes you actually say what she said. This was most likely true of the Apostle Paul. He was just a person like you and me, just flesh and blood with a mum. In this connection, I think it's very interesting that we read in Corinthians that Paul wanted to send to the church there his assistant Timothy. And to Timothy, he once wrote, I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am now persuaded lives in you. Now, faith isn't a hand-me-down. It's a personal relationship we must all have with Jesus Christ. But it is so often introduced and taught and the depths of it learned at a mother's knee. Of course, it has to grow and there are responsibilities on all of us. But a mum can give us such a, a good foundation and can fertilise the seed of faith 
that is planted in a young life. Today, we need mums and grannies who can pass on to their children the precious spiritual truths of our Christian heritage. That will give their children all the opportunity to experience real spiritual life when they mature, and that's a precious gift. Once a visitor in the home of the famous preacher and author, J. Campbell Morgan, he had noted he had four sons, and all of them were preachers too. And they were gathered together for a family meal. And the visitor asked this question, well, who is the best preacher here? Without any hesitation, they all replied, mother. But listen, you don't need to have any children of your own to be a spiritual mum. I'm really heartened by the number of people, mainly women, but a few men too, who involve themselves in the spiritual work with their young people. Some are teaching the Bible, some are with the children doing crafts or reading stories, listening to them, giving wee snippets of advice and no doubt pithy spiritual sayings. These will get under the skins of the young and help them to grow in the faith and help them deal with the things that stress them out in later life. So note that mothers, spiritual mothers, have the ability to pass on a deep wisdom that has learned over the years, one that enriches those who receive it. The second thing I want you to see is that mothers have the ability to bring a good sense of self to their children. In the west of Scotland here, you'll have grown up with the phrase, we're all Jock Tamson's bairns. That means we're all just the same, we're all just equal, we're all just flesh and blood. It's a great phrase, but in reality, we don't really live in that kind of world. We're very much into the cult of celebrity. And of course, few of us will ever become that ourselves. Most of us will never be known outside the circles we're in, except if something happens which thrusts fame upon us. But I've read that 50% of millennials want fame, but not necessarily as a singer or a wealthy property owner or anything else, just fame itself. Of course, when television was on, the X Factor was on, the audition queues were huge. People want to be known, even if they couldn't sing a note. Why? because we live in a depersonalizing society. We often feel we're just numbers, and so we can understand the desire for fame as a reaction against that. The worst effects of that desire are when people go for 15 minutes of it by shooting others. In this chapter, Paul is being just like a mum. He's really telling them so much that is positive. Love is patient and kind. It always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. And that helps to build self-esteem when it's taken in. Sadly, some parents are not so good at giving positive messages. And it has to be said that dads can often be down on their kids. Some will even tell them they'll never make anything of themselves. Mums often have more hope for them. Let me tell you about a little African boy. He grew up in a very poor home in a very poor neighborhood. And he shared this home with his cousin. But although he didn't have a dad around, he did have a mum, and she must have given him some hope. But initially, he got into drink and crime and gang fights. His life was a real mess. One day it was his cousin who said, you'll never make anything of yourself. Well, he was angered by that and was determined to prove him wrong. He went to a local gym and asked a trainer if he could be taken on as a boxer. He was told to get lost because the trainer had good fighters to look after. As he was leaving, an assistant trainer said that he would train him. Just a year or so later, he won the Olympic gold medal. Then a few years later, became the two-time heavyweight champion of the world. Today, He's associated with selling grills and other products too. But actually, he's the pastor of a church and his name, George Foreman. 
His message is that there is hope for everyone. Don't give up, mothers. You never know what can happen in life. Paul wants us to get hold of that message, that we're not just also rans, not just Jock Tamson's bairns, we're not just numbers, but people with potential and hope and a God who is able to help us in incredible ways. We don't need to pursue fame. Rather, we need to realize that God is pursuing us with something much better, with his blessings and with his purposes and with his fabulous love described in that amazing chapter. If only we will stay long enough, if only we'll stay still long enough, we'll see it. Don't give up, mothers. You never know what can happen in life. That's a message to spiritual mums too. But I want you to see also that mothers have the ability to show Christ to us. Mums will often do without so that their children can have sacrificial. Mums will often take a lot of battering emotionally from their children, but yet not respond with aggression. Mums will suffer in silence rather than impose their will on a family. Mums may be submissive, sacrificial, vulnerable, yet who can deny the power of a mum? Paul was a father to the church in Corinth. His preaching brought many to birth in the faith. But in his words, we see he was more like a mum than a dad. He suffered so that they wouldn't. He gave himself so that they would benefit. We know he worked hard in a, a non-church job as a tent maker so that he would be no burden to them financially. But also he was willing to sacrifice the very supportive and comforting presence of his finest assistant, Timothy, so that they would benefit from his ministry. That's love. And 1 Corinthians 13 is testament to Paul's heart and life, which was full of the greatest love in the universe. Let me illustrate Paul's love and a mother's love in these wee stories. They really speak of Christ. A teacher asked a boy this question. Suppose your mother baked a pie and there were seven of you, your parents and five children. What part of the pie would you get? A sixth, replied the boy. I'm afraid you don't know your fractions, said the teacher. Remember, there are seven of you. Yes, teacher, said the boy, but you don't know my mother. Mother would say she didn't want any pie. A little boy forgot his lines in Sunday school, the Sunday school play. His mother was in front in the front row to prompt him. She gestured and formed the words silently with her lips, but it did not help. Her son's memory was blank. Finally, he, she leaned forward and whispered the, the cue, I am the light of the world. The child beamed and with great feeling and a loud, clear voice, he said, my mother is the light of the world. Now, a well-known quote from the writer Washington Irving. The love of a mother is never exhausted. It never changes. It never tires. It endures through all, in good repute, in bad repute. In the face of the world's condemnation, a mother's love still lives on. So reflective of 1 Corinthians 13. Remember, God's love is eternal, shown to us by Jesus, and so often shown to us by a mother. Thank you, mums. Thank you, spiritual mums. May God bless you. And now let us dedicate the offering to God. Lord, bless these our offerings that the church, the mother of us all, might continue its work of birthing, nurturing, maturing, serving, and above all, loving people into the life that is eternal. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour and our Lord. Amen. Let's come together now once more before God in prayer. Let us pray. Our loving God, we thank you for the love of our mothers and those who were mothers to us. With your own gift of life, our mother bore us in her womb and gave us life. 
She tenderly, patiently cared for us and taught us to walk and talk. She read to us and made us laugh. No one delighted in our successes more. No one could comfort us better in our failures. We are so grateful for the way she mothered us and mentored us and even discipled us. Help the loving heart of all mums to continue to love and give themselves to others. Strengthen them when they are down and give them hope when they are discouraged. On this Mothering Sunday, we thank you too for all who have been spiritual mothers to us and have helped us to bring us to birth as believers. Thank you for their prayers, their example, their patience. Loving God, you have given us the right to be called children of God. Help us to show your love in our homes, that they may be places of love, security and truth. Loving God, Jesus, your son, was born into the family of Mary and Joseph. Bless all parents who care for their children. Strengthen those families under stress and may your love be known where no human love is found. Loving God, we thank you for the family of the church. We pray that all may find their true home here, that the lonely, the marginalised, the rejected may be welcomed and loved in the name of Jesus. Loving God, as we see the brokenness of our world, we pray for healing among the nations, especially remembering the awful times that the people of Myanmar and Yemen are going through and the Rohingyas in Bangladesh and the Uyghur peoples in China. Let's come together now once more before God in prayer. Let us pray. Our loving God, we thank you for the love of our mothers and those who were mothers to us. With your own gift of life, our mother bore us in her womb and gave us life. She tenderly, patiently cared for us and taught us to walk and talk. She read to us and made us laugh. No one delighted in our successes more. No one could comfort us better in our failures. We are so grateful for the way she mothered us and mentored us and even discipled us. Help the loving heart of all mums to continue to love and give themselves to others. Strengthen them when they are down and give them hope when they are discouraged. On this Mothering Sunday, we thank you too for all who have been spiritual mothers to us and have helped us to bring us to birth as believers. Thank you for their prayers, their example, their patience. Loving God, you have given us the right to be called children of God. Help us to show your love in our homes, that they may be places of love, security and truth. Loving God, Jesus, your son, was born into the family of Mary and Joseph. Bless all parents who care for their children. Strengthen those families under stress and may your love be known where no human love is found. Loving God, we thank you for the family of the church. We pray that all may find their true home here that the lonely, the marginalised, the rejected may be welcomed and loved in the name of Jesus. Loving God, as we see the brokenness of our world, we pray for healing among the nations, especially remembering the awful times that the people of Myanmar and Yemen are going through, and the Rohingyas in Bangladesh and the Uyghur peoples in China, and all oppressed minorities, all subject to unjust laws. We pray for food where there is hunger, thanking you for so many that have been helped with our food banks, for freedom where there is oppression. Thank you for those who brought the world's attention through the media and political efforts, for healing where there is sickness and disease, thanking you for all who work in the health services and who all who are carers and helpers of others. Lord, thank you for the hopes of new freedoms that have come from the vaccines. With the new doors that are about to be opened, may there be a determination to build a better world, one that is less selfish, more compassionate, less greedy, more willing to share and less stuck in destructive ways and more committed to the real freedom that is in Christ. May what we do bring help and healing to our world. May we never cease to bring the good news of the love of God, both in word and in action. So bless all on our hearts this day. Your glory's sake we pray. Amen. I'll clear away today's intimations at this point in our service. The phone line remains available for those who do not have access to the internet. 
and you can call 01294 654 696 from 11am on a Sunday morning and for the week thereafter in order to listen to our services. Prayer time continues online at Facebook during the lockdown and that takes place on a Tuesday and a Thursday afternoon at 2pm. So please join our worship leaders Shirley and Lynn for a time of reflection and private prayer on those afternoons during the week. The chance to ask questions about the basis of union document uh, remains open and the closing date for any questions you would like to submit is this coming Wednesday the 17th of March. So please send on any questions you may have to either the Muir or Relief Clerk. With the ease out of lockdown on the horizon and worship being possible from the 26th of March, both sessions will meet shortly um, to decide how we will go forward uh, in the coming weeks and how we can slowly move back towards worship in church on a Sunday morning. And now the benediction. May the Lord who brought us to birth by his spirit strengthen us for the Christian life. May the Lord who provides for all our needs sustain us day by day. May the Lord who broods over us as a mother broods over her children bless us. May the Lord whose steadfast love is constant as a mother's care send us out to live and work for the good of your kingdom and the glory of your name. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you now and throughout this day and forevermore.